We are truly honored to be joined today by the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, his Beatitude Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabala. The area that you serve includes, of course, Israel and Palestine, Cyprus and Jordan, what we sometimes just simply say is the Holy Land. And we can't talk about the Holy Land at the moment without talking about the terrible dark night of these recent months. One of the comments that you made recently I thought was very interesting. You said it's objectively intolerable. It's an interesting phrase, objectively. It's a shame that we have to almost say that, that you almost have to argue about suffering. I mean, uh, the facts are very clear what is going on. Um, uh, first of all, I have to say that what happened on 7 October is also ob objectively intolerable. But also what is going on in Gaza. Um, I mean, more than 80% of the houses have been destroyed. About almost 40,000 or more, approximately 40,000 people killed. It's not the first time we have a war, but we never saw people starving, as we are seeing. The proportion, I don't know, so of the violence we are assisting is something that uh, goes beyond any understanding. Recently, I, I was reading one of, uh, about one of your visits to Gaza and you spoke about the condition saying it was hard to recognize the landscape was changed and the people, you could see evidence of their malnourishment. M maybe talk about that, just b being on the ground. What was your impression? So, uh, I saw the pictures before entering, of course, but when you enter inside, uh, the impression is totally different because, as you said, the landscape totally different. Uh, there are no roads. Uh, you have to, mo uh, to go through the mountains of garbage, garbage and or, or rebel, I don't know, so in English. And you see the population living in these ruins and something that, uh, especially the children, along with very strong impact uh, on you. There is nothing, nothing working, nothing, uh, uh, no electricity, no water, no, sorry, no, no sewage, um, no communication. And uh, uh, so you live in a very, uh, a very, um, very poor conditions and so on. And also our Christian community, they are living in the church compounds, Orthodox and Catholic, without nothing. I mean, uh, they lost everything. And they live in, um, in the classrooms of the school uh, and uh, they cook once or twice per week and this should be sufficient for all the week. Since month people don't eat vegetables and fruits so we have a very evident lack of vitamins. You see also the face, uh, the situation is very difficult to, f to have medicines for chronic disease. If you have diabetes we have a disease of <laughs> normal uh, conditions and the lack of hygiene also very uh, heavy consequences on the population, especially the, the fragile population, the children and the elderly, and there is no way uh, to, to support, to help them. All north of Gaza, in the Gaza city, there, is, uh, there are about 600,000 people, no hospitals, nothing. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. We hear of the Holy Family Parish in Gaza and that, that they're doing what they can and they're sheltering all faith but they haven't been immune churches haven't been immune to the destruction maybe tell us a little bit about the parish uh, before the war we had a uh, little more than a thousand christians catholic and orthodox uh, mostly orthodox but we are all living together now uh, remain 621 exactly uh, christians some of them, as you said, have been killed in the bombs at the beginning of the war, I think in uh, October. Others died uh, killed by December by some uh, snipers. Uh, others died because of lack of uh, medical assistance. And others uh, managed when it was possible, now it's not more possible, was possible to emigrate. They got a visa. Uh, foreign visa so they could, uh, could leave in this terrible situation. They are all living there now in the church compounds, as I said, in very poor uh, conditions. So they, uh, the classrooms became the place where the families live, just blankets uh, separating family, fa families. 
they cook once or maximum twice per, uh, per week, and this should be sufficient for all. And of course, there is no gas. So, uh, but there is a lot of wood because all these house destroyed, there's a lot of furniture <laughs> uh, that can provide woods. It's not simple uh, also to provide food for them. There are still, we have uh, sisters there, Mother Teresa sisters, are providing assistance to about 60 um, uh, children, disabled children, very seriously disabled. Part of the house has been also hit by the tanks. And now they are, some of them are living in the ch some of these children are in the church. The church, part of the church has been used as shelter for these children. We have tried to do what is possible to, to help and support them. If we turn to, in some ways, the remedy, and I know something that you said recently, that it's hard to even think of the peace plan. Let's have a ceasefire to begin with. So that's one part of it. But a lovely phrase you used recently, that hope is the daughter of faith. Where do you get your hope? Hope is the daughter of faith. But where are we with hope at the moment? Don't confuse hope with optimism. I'm not very optimistic about the future, but hope is a way of being in life. Uh, where you keep uh, the faith as a daughter of faith. Faith, if you have faith, strong faith in God, or faith in something else, if you are not a believer, uh, this gives you also the instrument to live the present situation in a different way, with a purpose. Uh, um, so, and for us, I'm a man of church, but also try to be a believer. <laughs> uh, and. Um, the faith in God is also uh, give us the strength to, to do all what is possible to change something in the life. We cannot change the macro political level and so on, but at least in our communities, in our relations and the people we meet to have a different attitude where you keep, uh, consider other human beings, not to dehumanize the other, which is very important in the language and attitude and the relations and so on and um, try to do something to change. First of all, be, uh, not, uh, uh, and the aim is not to, um, to get a result, but to give expression to a desire which is inside us. What would your message be for maybe people here in, in Ireland, in the Irish church, watching in? Well, first of all, to pray for us is very important. Uh, to, uh, to talk. Uh, to organize meetings and prayer meetings, but also conferences, whatever, uh, about their situation where we can inform people about uh, what is going on in a um, balanced way as much as possible. Truth is very important to say, uh, seeing their truth, but also without becoming part of confrontation. Uh, we have all, always, to be, always to be a constructive presence and uh, to show as much as you can empathy. Uh, you cannot change the situation, but we can say a word of empathy and closeness to all of us. Cardinal, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you.